Hey everybody, it's Dream Crusher back again for another Murder Mystery Monday. As you can tell, as you can hear, I'm sounding a little better. I'm at the tail end of this cold or flu, whatever the hell it was. So my voice is still a little raspy and you may hear a cough here and again, but I'm going to go ahead and get this content out here for you guys. I want to give a special hey to any new viewers and a welcome back to any returning viewers. I appreciate any love and support you drop for your girl. I've been putting in a ton of effort trying to get this content better and better so that you guys can stay engaged. So any help and support would be super greatly appreciated. But let's get into it. So here for Murder Mystery Monday, I will be discussing a serial killer by the name of Rodney Alcala. Okay, I'm, you know I'm horrible about pronouncing names. So I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's spelled A-L-C-A-L-A. -A -A. So we're going to go with Alcala. We're just going to call him Rodney just to save me the embarrassment. So, Rodney was an American serial killer whose good looks and high IQ helped him lure victims. His 1978 appearance on the television show The Dating Game resulted in his nickname of The Dating Game Killer. So, who was Rodney? Serial killer Rodney James Alcala aka Rodney because that's what I'm gonna call him going forward murdered at least nine people and girls across the United States in the 1970s though his true toll deaths oh my goodness sorry though his true death toll could be numbered more than a hundred um, he spent most of his time in prison for sexual assault and other crimes in the 1970s but continued to rape and kill when he was free um, Autopsies of some of Rodney's victims revealed that he would strangle the women, then wait for them to regain consciousness before the final kill. So he basically is like a cat. You know how like a cat plays with their, um, with the mouse. So like they'll like put their hand on their tail and then lift their paw up and make the mouse think that they're going to escape, but then a cat pounces on them again. So he basically played with his victims, which is a whole new level of sickness. But I guess it was like a game to him. Rodney would sometimes arrange the corpses of the women he had murdered in poses, which is, you know, I always joke around about like, I tell my best friend, I'm like, yeah, if I die first, like, have me, like, taxidermied and, like, plastered at the club dancing. But, like, legitimately, it's a joke. This guy did this in real life. That's crazy. But in 2010, pictures um, were taken by Rodney's, um, by Rodney decades earlier and were made public to try and identify other victims. He had been behind bars since um, July of 1979, arrested for the abduction and murder of a 12-year-old girl. Rodney was sentenced to death in California, but died of natural causes in 2021. Oh, so he just died this year. That's, that's crazy. But let's find out more about Rodney. Let's dig into his early life, because as we all know, the childhood usually has some part of who these people become. Let's dig into it. So, Rodney was born as Rodrigo Alcala Bocor, whatever. I, I'm not even going to sit here and try to pronounce his last name, but all we know is his name is Rodney now. In San Antonio, Texas, on August 23rd, 1943, he moved to Mexico with his family when he was around eight years old, and his father abandoned the family while they were in Mexico. So, you know, he had a trash father. Rodney and his siblings and his mother later relocated to Los Angeles. At the age of 17, Rodney joined the Army, However, he was discharged in 1964 after suffering a breakdown and being diagnosed with an antisocial personality disorder. So he attended the California, Uni California State University, then transferred to UCLA, 
later on. He graduated with a fine, fine arts degree in 1968. After fleeing California that year, Rodney used his John Beeger, Berger, Berger, <laughs> I don't know, B-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E John Berger, we're going to go with that, alias to enroll in New York University, where he took a class with Roman Pulaski. Polanski. Jeez, I'm slaughtering these names today, so I'm sorry, guys. Look, I'm... Like I said, I'm feeling better, but I'm not top notch. So you have to excuse me if I absolutely just mortify and uh, whatever I'm trying to say. If I fuck up the names, if I fucking up, I'm sorry. So moving on his first arrest after fleeing the scene of his 1968 attack on an eight year old um, Tally Shapiro, Rodney traveled to the East Coast. In 1971, he was included on the FBI's most wanted list um, because of his attacks on these girls, these young girls. Some girls at the arts camp in New Hampshire recognized their counselor who was using the name John Beaker or Baker or Berger, however you want to pronounce it, from the list. They told the camp's dean and Rodney was soon arrested though he was able to plead to a lesser charge of child molestation and serve just 34 months in prison. That is not long enough. That is not long enough at all. Though he was a registered sex offender, Rodney managed to land a job with the Los Angeles Times as a typesetter in September of 1977. So this man just had all the tricks up under his sleeve. Like he was just... He was throwing the rock and hiding his hands like he was not getting caught up in anything. He had all these aliases. That's that's crazy. Um, so his past conviction for sexual assault prompted California police to interview Rodney in March of 1978 as a potential suspect in the Hillside Strangler killings. Another set of serial murders that occurred in California in the 1970s. Rodney was cleared of those crimes, but the police did not realize they had actually spoken with a different serial killer. So apparently there were two serial killers at the same time in that same area. That is extremely uncommon. So that's, yeah, the police had a, had a tough time with that one. In September 1978, Rodney appeared as Bachelor Number One on the Dating Game, a TV show that had men and women cheekily interview prospective dates. Um, sight unseen. Um, at the time, he was a convicted child molester, but the show did not run a background check. That's <laughs> that is crazy. So my thing is that you. This man has killed women, is a child molester, and is wanted, but he appeared on a dating game show. Like, I just, that is just boggles my mind. Like, it, I, I cannot believe he actually did that. That is, that is crazy. That takes some balls for real. But, you know, somebody with his type of personality most likely you know, a narcissist as well, just feels like he can get away with everything and anything. So he did not even consider not going on the show because he just thinks too highly of himself and his capabilities. It's just, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But let's get back into these notes. So Rodney was introduced as a successful photographer who got a start when his father found him in the dark room at the age of 13. Then, when asked by Cheryl Bradshaw his prospective date to describe what kind of meal he would be, he answered, I'm called the banana, and I look really good, peel me. So his confidence was just off the charts. You can just tell by his response. So the fact that this man went on to show knowing what he's done and the people that are looking for him, it just, it honestly doesn't surprise me at all. 
So Rodney used his charm and innuendo and won him a date with Bradshaw. However, when they met face to face, she felt that Rodney was acting really creepy and opted um, not to go out with him, which she's lucky because he probably would have killed her. I it, like honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he would have raped and killed her if she had actually went out on a date with him. So let's find out some more about his victims. So Rodney was a tall, good looking man who often told women that he was a fashion photographer who wanted to take photos for a contest. His intelligence and charm could make him persuasive. A woman who missed a date with Rodney um, because he had been arrested in 1979 later told people that he was easy to trust and he had a way of talking to people that put them at ease that is a dangerous dangerous person so a person who already kind of has a twisted mind but then also has that quality about them that is a very very dangerous combination so in the 1970s rodney killed um, Cornelia Curley, 23, and then Eleanor Hoover, 23, both residents of a New York City um, apartment building. Curley was raped and strangled with her own stockings in her apartment in June 1971. Hoover disappeared on July 15, 1977, leaving behind a calendar that stated that she was meeting with um, Rodney but under his alias of John Berger. Her remains were discovered in New York's Winchester County in 1978. Rodney pled guilty to these murders in 2012 and received, oh my goodness, and received a sentence of 25 years to life, though it would only be served if California released, sorry, though it would only be served if California releases him from custody. Which, you know, obviously that didn't happen because he died in person. Um, Rodney was arrested in July of 1979 for the, abduct for the abduction and murder of 12-year-old Robin Sussabo of Huntington Beach, California. Sorry, guys. My nose was getting a little stuffy. He was convicted of these charges in 1980. Four years later, his conviction was overturned as the jury had improperly been told about Rodney's criminal past. Another trial in 1986 resulted in a second guilty verdict, but in 2001, this was overturned on a technicality. That's some old bullshit. 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 So... While in custody, Rodney wrote a book, You, the Jury, 1994, in which he uh, argued he was innocent. Boy, come on now. Come on. Before Rodney was retried a third time for Sesamo's death, the advances in the world of DNA and other crime scene analysis provided evidence tying him to more crimes Um it says that he was forced to provide a DNA sample. I don't even care. He should have provided a DNA sample because, you know, this man committed a lot more crimes than what he confessed to. Well, actually, he didn't confess. He claimed to be innocent, but was being tried for. So at his next trial, which took place in 2010, Rodney again was charged with killing of Sosimo. Um, part of the case against him was a pair of gold earrings linked to the victim um, that had been found in his Seattle storage locker. Rodney played clips from the dating game um, that he said provided he was already wearing gold earrings in 1978, but these did not convince the jury. Um, in addition, he faced charges of assault and strangling Four women in California in the late 1970s, 18-year-old Gerald, oh my goodness, Jill Barcom, who was killed in November of 1977, 27-year-old Giorgio Wixton, tw also 27, who was raped 
beaten and strangled in December of 1978, and 32-year-old Charlotte Lamb, who was killed in June of 1978, in addition to 21-year-old Jill Parentu, I'm sure that's wrong, Parentu, I don't know, we're going to go with that, who was killed in June 1979. Rodney opted to represent himself during the trial, Um, and in November of 2010, he was found guilty of all five murders and was sentenced to death in March of 2010. Yeah, that's exactly where he deserved to be, and the ruling was absolutely correct on that one. Um, In... 2016, Rodney was charged with the 1977 killing of Christine Ruth Thornton in uh, in Wyoming. Oh my goodness. Though the prosecutors opted not to um, extradite him to stay in trial. Because I mean, honestly, he's already going to die in prison. So why not? You know, it, it makes no sense. I mean, at least the family got... Um, closure you know they knew who you know it's not going to bring their loved one back but at least they know who killed um their loved one so authorities also believe that he killed pamela um lamson in san francisco bay um in the fall of 1977 however the dna collected at that crime scene was too degraded to test um so he was not charged with that crime Some of Rodney's victims survived his attacks. Um, In 1968, a witness spotted um, Rodney driving off with Shapiro. Concerned, he followed them to an apartment and called the police. The responding officer discovered Shapiro, who had been raped and beaten with a steel bar, but was still alive. In February 1979, Monique Hoyt, then 15, managed to escape um, Rodney's clutches after he had raped her. I'm just glad that she was able to escape, like, and that she wasn't killed, but I'm sure if she didn't manage to escape, he absolutely would have killed her, but I'm glad she was able to get away. So Rodney's exact death toll is unknown. Some authorities believe that he has murdered around 50 people. Other think, other people think that he has taken as many as 130 lives. Unfortunately, we will never know. Um, but either way, that's just mind boggling. So following the disappearance of Sasmo, a sketch of the suspect was issued. Um, Rodney's parole officer saw it and recognized him. So the police tracked um, him down and he was eventually arrested on July 24th, 1979. Following Rodney's arrest in July 1979, the police found hundreds of his photographs in a Seattle storage locker. These images were like pretty explicit um, and may include other victims of Rodney's. So in 2010, the police shared many of these photos with the public in hopes that Um, They could identify some of the victims in the photos. Some people were alive and came forward. Um, The photos aided in identifying Thornton as one of Rodney's victims. So, you know, it's sad that 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 happened, but the photos did at least help identify one of his victims. But at least he's no you know, no longer able to hurt anyone else. So, as we discussed before, Rodney died on July 24th, 2021 in California while while awaiting execution. He was 77 years old. Honestly, he shouldn't even have lived that long. They kill people for less. But, you know, at least he wasn't able to hurt anybody else. But, yeah, everybody, that was Rodney, an American serial killer, a.k.a. the dating game killer. So, 
if you want, you can finish watching the video. I was playing Dead by Daylight. I was scared shitless in this video. And as you see, I get killed pretty quickly in this game. But I love the game. It's an awesome game. But I hope you guys tune in next time for the next Murder Mystery Monday. And also tune in for my Wicked Women Wednesday where I will be discussing a woman killer. So keep a lookout for that. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys next time, okay? All right. Bye.